Do you make your own carb flanges and valve cover bases in-house or do you outsource them? When I started out, I made all of them by myself on this mill. And it did pretty good, but it's not, it's, it doesn't cut as precise as the bigger higher end ones. And I found a guy in North Carolina that I became friends with. His name was Matt Welsh. And I ended up having him do these. This is one that he did for me. See how nice those radiuses are and the finish on it. So I just ordered those in bulk from him and it worked out great for both of us. Excellent job. What welding machine do you use? How come the accumulated heat on the piece doesn't affect your travel speed? Do you put more filler to the puddle? Or you go faster but I can't see? You try to keep the travel speed the same and the same amount of filler rod going the whole way. And then at the end, you just let off the heat on your amperage controller so the puddle doesn't get wider. Hello, I have some aluminum pistons with cracks on top. Have you had any success in TIG welding the cracks? Thank you. No, I've never welded up cracks on pistons and I probably wouldn't recommend it, especially if they're cast pistons. Because to do it properly, you're going to have to groove them out and weld them in. And by the time you get all done, you'll probably have distorted them and they won't fit in the sle sleeves or the cylinders properly. Um, if you want to see on my website, I've got a video somewhere down here showing this one showing how I did a cast aluminum TIG repair with some cracks. I grew, I ground it out, filled it in with a weld, and used dye print, dye penetrant to check for any cracks that I didn't see. But no, I I wouldn't do it for pistons. Will the TIG button you sell work on a don't laugh Vulcan Pro TIG 205? Really need one. It sure will. Just go to 6061.com, scroll down, click on this TIG button image, and then scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and this is the list of all the compatible machines we have currently. And there's the Vulcan models. How long have you been TIG welding? I started in 2002. Where is that shop? I love it. Do you live there? He's referring to my old shop that I sold about three years ago up in northern Utah. And right in the middle there was living space. But I put it all in a semi-trailer so I'm not tied down to one location all year round. Okay, I know nothing, I got it. But why does he sometimes not use the little metal rod, only the torch? So this is called filler rod. It comes in several different sizes, and you add it to the weld joint to make it stronger. But on a lot of projects, if you just wanna get it welded up and sealed and it's not 
under a lot of loads or stresses and you use the right type of aluminum, you can get away with just not using filler rod as long as the joints are really tight and touching the whole way. One nice thing about not using filler rod is you can brace the torch with both hands and stay really steady. Should add some music. 